this video, you'll be watching an excerpt from our AutoCAD Level 1 class. We'll be covering AutoCAD basics, including lines, circles, and arcs. So line, circle, arc, let me put the shortcuts into the chat. L is a shortcut for line. C is a shortcut for circle. A is a shortcut for arc. And so we'll, we'll practice with these in the program. Okay. Close the blocks drawing. You can use the X on the blocks tab. You don't have to save it. We'll see that drawing a lot throughout this class. We'll bring it back up when we need it. Um, to create a new drawing, you can click this little plus tab to create a new drawing. Or if you go to new, that works. Another option, drop down, pick a template from the list or browse to templates. So for AutoCAD class, it's not that important what we start with, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the ACAD template. If you don't see ACAD.DWT, you can try browsing. There should be a bunch of templates. ACAD DWT is just the most basic template. It doesn't have very much. Uh, it's just a blank starting point. But if you don't know how to get there, no big deal. Just open a blank drawing. All right. When you have that blank drawing open, let's save it. So at the top, I'm going to click Save. Control S also works for save. And I'm going to save it in my AutoCAD Level 1 folder. And I'll just call this Practice Drawing. Notice is saving it in 2018. So what that means is you can use any version 2018 through 2024 with this drawing. They're all the same version file format. You have different tools, but you have um, the same file format. And then save. Okay, once you saved it, the tab is now gonna be called practice drawing instead of drawing two. So from the home tab of the ribbon, in that first panel, the draw panel, we have line, polyline, circle, arc. The circle and arc buttons have a little drop down. So if you click the bottom half of the circle button, you'll see there's different options. If you click the bottom half of the arc button, you see there's different options. Whatever option you choose last will be the option that this top half of the button uses. So if, for example, if I pick start and angle, then next time when I hit cancel and I start over, this top half of the button is start and angle. So it remembers your last selection. Okay. Um, if you don't want to use these buttons, you can type. So I, I will use the button for class, but you could type L enter. And then the command line starts talking. So it says line, specify a first point. I'm gonna click on line. It tells me to pick a first point. I'm gonna click somewhere on my screen. Then it tells me to click a next point or I can undo. If I mess up, a good option is to undo down at the command line. Um, but anyways, I just want you to click up and down and up and down making a zigzag. Then I want you to try undo a couple times down at the command line. You can click on it or you can type you enter. Notice how we'll undo one segment at a time. Then hit escape. If you use control Z, it will undo the entire line command, the entire uh, step that we were working on. If you use this undo button at the top left, the big arrow, that will also undo that entire line, all the segments. If you use a little, drop down, you can see these are all my steps. Notice how line, well, because I had done some things earlier, but anyways, if I undo this line command, it undid the whole thing, right? So when you're working, always check the command line for undo. That way you can undo one segment at a time instead of the entire line. Um, so we'll start again, line, and then just make a zigzag. So clicking for each endpoint. 
then kind of zigzag back to where you started. And then when you get to here, I want you to go to the command line and use the close option. You can either type C enter or click on close. All right, so that closes it. Admasters offers online and classroom training for a variety of Autodesk software. For more information, go to www.cadmasters.com or give us a call at 925-939-1378. Once it's closed, select one line segment. Notice it's separate from all the other line segments. And notice that it has three blue squares. Those blue squares are called grips. And you can use those grips to do several things. So if you click on the middle grip, you can pick up the line and you can click somewhere else to put it down. If you click on the endpoint grip, you can pick that up move that somewhere else and put that down. All right, so click to pick it up, click to put it down. If you hover your cursor over the endpoint grip, you get a little menu. In that menu, you have an option to stretch the line or lengthen the line. So stretch is similar to just clicking on the grip, but lengthen holds the angle of that line and just allows you to make it longer or shorter. So if I click lengthen, it can get longer or shorter. Um, so I wanna show you properties. When an object is selected, you can right click and open up properties. Properties is a little window or palette that you can move around. You can even put it on a second screen. Um, it can be floating or it can be docked. So to dock it on the side, I'm just going to click in this dark gray bar, click, drag it to the side. When it expands, I'm going to let go. And now it's docked on the side. There is an option to allow the docking or not allow the docking. In this dark gray bar, I can right click. Right now it's allowing me to dock it. So if this was not check marked, then it won't allow you to dock it on the side. So some people like keeping properties open, some people close it. In this class, I typically close it when I don't need it. Um, but up here, if you hover your cursor in that dark gray bar, there is this auto hide feature. So the little arrow thing, if you click that, it shrinks it down to a short or a skinny bar on the side. When you move your cursor over the bar, it opens. When you move your cursor away from the bar, it closes. So that's an option. Uh, another option, if I don't use auto hide, there is an X and the X will completely close that properties window. For the command, PR is the command for properties. So when an object is selected, at the top of properties, it should tell you what kind of object it is. So this is a line. The general properties have to do with layers. We'll talk about layers tomorrow. And then we have geometry properties that we'll talk about today. So under geometry, the starting point has X, Y, Z coordinates. The ending point has X, Y, Z coordinates. Then the delta is the length in the X direction, the Y direction, and the Z direction. So Z should say zero right now. We haven't given any elevation to this line. And then it shows us the length of the line, just from start to end, and the angle of the line, depending on the direction that it was drawn. So notice some things under geometry are white text, and some are gray text. White text, you can actually click on those numbers and change them. Gray text, you cannot. Okay. And depending on what kind of object it is, certain things will be available and certain things will not. Okay. So let's hit escape. When you hit escape, that will deselect the object. And at the top of properties, it will say no selection. Okay. So that was line. Next, let's talk about circles. So go to um, the circle button, but if you use the drop down, I'm gonna start with center radius. If you type C enter, I believe the default will be center radius. 
So go ahead and choose circle, center radius. Then the command line will say to specify a center point. Go ahead and click somewhere on your screen. As you move your cursor, you see that radius will follow your cursor. And you have an option to just type, I mean, sorry, click a radius or type a radius. So for our first try, let's just click to place that circle. Once you've placed it, select it, and you'll see it has five grips, right? So it has a top quadrant, bottom quadrant, left quadrant, right quadrant, and then it has a center point. So go ahead and click on the center grip to pick it up. Click somewhere else to put it down. Once you've placed it, um, go and click on one of those quadrant grips to pick it up and you can stretch the radius, right? And then click again to place the new radius. Now we'll look at properties. So the circle is selected. At the top of properties, it says circle. And under geometry, we have XYZ coordinates for the center point. We have a radius. Notice the radius is not grayed out. You can actually change the radius from here. So let's type a radius of 10 and hit enter. So it changes the circle as you type that in. It also affects the diameter. Diameter is 20. We have circumference, we have an area. So all of these values can be typed in. All right, hit escape. Let's draw a few more circles. I'm gonna go back to my circle button, the drop down. I'll use center radius, but this time we'll type in the command line. So you center radius, click a center point. And for the radius in the command line, let's type 10, enter. So your two circles should be the same size. Okay. This time let's use the diameter option. Um, if you use the drop down, you have the option center diameter. But if you don't use the drop down, you can type C enter. You can pick your center point. And in the command line, there's an option for diameter. So I'll use the option in the command line. When you choose diameter, you should see the yellow dashed radius is now twice as long. So it's a diameter. Let's use a diameter of five. Enter. Okay, so this one should be smaller than the others. Let me go back to the menu here. So we have option to draw a circle that matches two points where we click, three points that we click, tangent, tangent, radius, so tangent to two objects, and tangent, tangent, tangent is tangent to three objects. Um, I wanna use tangent, tangent, radius. If you like typing, C, enter, there's tangent, tangent, radius in the command line. So either method, go ahead and pick tangent, tangent, radius. Then I want you to zoom into the lines that we've drawn, zoom into a V shape. When you see a V shape, hover your cursor on the left side of the V. You see this green symbol and your cursor will say deferred tangent. So the green symbol is a tangent symbol. You can click anywhere along that line. On the right side of the V, again, you get that green symbol, click anywhere along that line. And now the command line is asking for a radius. I'm gonna use a small radius. Let's try 0.5, enter. So that should give you a circle tangent to the two lines. Admasters offers online and classroom training for a variety of Autodesk software. For more information, go to www.cadmasters.com or give us a call at 925-939-1378. So the last one we'll do before our break is ARC. So from this menu, there are a bunch of different arcs. We're only gonna do two of them. So the first one is the three point arc. Go ahead and click three point. And it's just like the name, you click three times. So click to start, click somewhere along the arc, and then click somewhere to finish the arc. 
Once you've created that three-point arc, select it. You'll see there are four grips. There is a center point. You can click to pick it up and you can click to put it down. There are endpoint grips and a midpoint grip. If I hover my cursor over an endpoint grip, I see an option to stretch. I can stretch that. And I see an option to lengthen. Lengthen will hold the center point and hold the radius. It will just make that arc longer or shorter. If I hover over the midpoint grip, I have, again, stretch. Stretch will change the radius, change the center point. And I have an option called radius. This will hold the center point and just change the radius. So in addition to all those grip options, we, we also have geometry where we can change radius, center point, things like that. All right, and hit escape. And then we're just gonna do one more arc and then we'll take our morning break. Um, so under arc, let's use start, center, end. So you wanna click a start point for the arc. And then you can imagine if I were drawing a full circle, where would the center point of that circle be? So click somewhere for your center point. And now it goes from your start point counterclockwise following your cursor. Um, in the command line, you have an option for angle or chord length. So chord length is the distance from the start to end point of that arc. Um, angle, let's say I wanted a quarter of a circle, that would be an angle of 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and try angle, type 90 and enter. Let's see, I'm gonna try something. Oops. So if I were to type negative 90, that would go clockwise. So positive 90 was counterclockwise and negative 90 was clockwise. All right, any questions on ARC? There's a whole bunch in here, so it just depends what you're trying to do. You can try those out as needed. CAD Masters offers online and classroom training for a variety of Autodesk software. For more information, go to www.cadmasters.com or give us a call at 925-939-1378.